Hello and welcome back to One More Pen. Today I'm talking about the Parker Jotter and I have this blue uh, one here. I have quite a few of them. I have this in blue, red, black and stainless steel. Um, these are the new ones and especially on the clip they, uh, they had a facelift on the Jotters I think around 2018 around there. And so it's just a, a little bit of a refreshed look. I, I also do like the older ones. I have one of them. I grew up with Parker Jotters. I used them in school. I had a stainless steel one at school. I got lost over the years, unfortunately, and um, it actually would be one of my grail pens to find another old Parker Jotter stainless steel. I haven't be been able to find one since. But um, I do have one with a um, plastic, with a black plastic barrel. And maybe I'll do a video uh, at some point to show you that one and maybe compare the two, the older and the newer one. So if you're into that, if you want to see that, uh, let me know in the comments and I will set that up. A lot of good things about the Parker Jotter. I mean, it's a pen that's really been around for a while and I think it's, it's proven itself to be a really good writer. It's a very reliable pen. It writes really well. Uh, it's not perfect though. It's got a few things that could be improved and we'll we'll talk about that. So we'll we'll take a closer look at the pen. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit and we will see what the bolt quality is all what it's like. Uh, I'll ink it up with something. We'll do a writing sample and um, yes, let's get into that. So I'll, we'll head over to the paper. Let's have a closer look at the Parker Jotter. So this is a pen that I think is very underestimated. Um, I see a lot on the internet about uh, starter pens like the Lamy Safari, Pilot Metropolitan and some other pens. And I don't often hear the Parker Jotter um, sort of mentioned as a, as a good starter pen, but I think it's, it's a really good choice. So let's have a closer look. This is the post-2018 facelifted Parker Jotter. Uh, but you still have the arrow clip, which is very much the, um, I guess, iconic for the Parker brand. The clip is very springy. It's not too tight. It's just very functional. Um, I know some people complain about the sharp point the arrow point on the arrow head on the uh, on the clip um, because I do think it can get stuck on your clothing if you're wearing something you know like a like a weave like a jersey or something like that but I've never had that problem um, the fletches in the arrow at the top it's just a really beautiful clip I think at the top the finial nothing there I, I would have loved to see the Parker emblem at the top. Um, and I do think I've seen that on some pens, actually. Hold on a second. Let me, let me see if I can find something. Okay, unfortunately not. I, I'm sure I've seen some of the Parker pens with the emblem on the, um, either on the cap or uh, for the click pens on the, the click button. But anyway, I, I can't find any of them now. But I think that would have been a really nice touch. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments, whether you agree with me. Um, I don't think it would take too much to do that. It could just be stamped in there and I think it would be, it would just look really, really good. Uh, as it is right now, I don't have any problem with it. And that's the finial at the bottom of the barrel there. The barrel is metal. Um, some of the Parker Jotters, the originals series. Um, the barrel is plastic. From the section to the barrel, there is a slight step, but you almost cannot feel it. It's very slight. And it looks like you have kind of a ring there, shiny ring. The section tapers down and flares out a little bit. It's uh, the only I wouldn't say it's a complaint, but preference perhaps. I, I would have loved the section to be just a little bit, a little bit thicker there. 
Uh, I think it's a little bit small for my hands when I use this pen for long writing sessions. I do feel like it's not the most comfortable, but I think that is simply a matter of preference and grip and so on. Uh, the nib, this is a medium and I haven't seen the jotters in anything else uh, but a medium. So I don't know if you do get them in a fine, but in any case, there's, there's nothing wrong with a medium. These nibs perform very well. The nibs are really beautiful as well. Parker on the nib there, and this is a medium. Unscrews, and you have plastic threads on metal, but I don't feel like there's much, uh, too much wear and tear that will happen there. I think it's perfectly fine. I've never had a pen where this has been a problem, to be honest. I think you would have to open and close the, you know, take off the, the barrel probably a million times before you have an issue there. And I'm going to be using just a Parker converter. These are Parker proprietary. You don't, you cannot just use any standard uh, cartridge there. It does not fit. In the hand, the pen is, it fits for me. I can use it unposted, but I know many people would prefer to post it. It is a little bit on the shorter side and the pen does post very securely. No issues there. One little thing that sometimes bothers me is when you tap the pen, um, I think this part, sometimes it catches uh, down down the uh, down the cap and then you, you get you get that happening and that's that's a little bit annoying but anyway that's just me see that sometimes sometimes it happens so I'm not crazy about that but it's not a it's not a major thing so build quality of this pen I think overall is really good it's it's a nice looking pen it's iconic um, no issues with it. The, the lines are all really perfectly, you know, trim and straight and nothing sticks out, nothing is sharp. Um, on the on the cap, by the way, at the back it says France and on the front you see Parker, the emblem and then Parker stamped in there. Really, really nice. So I think what we'll do is we'll do a writing sample with a spin and uh, I'll be using my Rodeo dot pad and for the ink um, I have actually had this pen inked up so I'll be using the same ink but um, it's run dry so I have to ink it up again but I'll be using Schaefer Renegade Blue which I think is a really nice ink that goes with this pen I have it right here and it's since I found this it's become one of my favorite inks okay let's ink this up now I do get a lot of ink all over the place and I don't know how this happened but it did it's one of those things I love these Schaefer bottles, they are really nice. Okay. So let's put that over there and here we go. So I'm not inking it up all the way. That will do. Let me just wipe it down. Even though I wipe it down, I'm pretty sure I'll get ink on my fingers anyway, because that seems to be inevitable no matter what I do. Make sure this cap is secure. So that I don't know, and there I do have blue. 
How does that even happen? How does that happen? I'm so careful. And put this back in the box so that I can put it out of the way. Right. Just wipe my fingers on something there. And as usual, I'm using my Rodeo Dot Pad. And you know what ink I'm using as well. But all right, let's do a writing sample. So this is the Parker Jotter. The nib, I believe, is a medium nib. And the ink we are using today would be Schaefer Renegade Blue. It's a lovely dark saturated blue ink. Wetness I think is pretty decent. Line variation well just a tiniest bit perhaps uh, I don't think you get a lot of line variation there but uh, yeah, maybe maybe if you really really want it you can force it out of the nib but I think for the most part you shouldn't expect any line variation this is quite a, a stiff nib I don't think it's going to yes it's not it's not giving much in the line of flex So this nib produces a very pleasant feedback and it's interesting, I, I find that with all the jotters that I have and I have a few of them, the feedback on the nib seems to be pretty consistent. I could be writing, even if I were not able to see what pen I'm using, purely from the feedback from the nib, I would be able to tell that it's a jotter. Um, they all feel the same. It's a very specific kind of feedback on these nibs and it's very pleasant. Um, the nibs are very smooth. It's very smooth and yet it still produces this very pleasant uh, feedback, which is very nice. I think you can see that the pen is quite wet. Um, it's quite, it, it, quite a lot of ink uh, from the nib there and uh, the ink that we're using, it's it's not producing a whole amount of shading, but th there is a little bit. And I think this is a very nice ink, actually, to go along with the color of the pen. So I would I would be very interested to know what you think about the Parker Charters. I think that these pens, like I said, they are very underestimated. Um, these are really actually quite beautiful pens. They make wonderful gifts they are not overpriced i think the uh, these ones with a metal barrel they they would be a little bit more expensive than the ones with a plastic barrel but i think the plastic barrel i don't know the, the exact price now but they with the plastic barrel they are way cheaper than for example the lamy safari and i think even cheaper than the pilot metropolitan this version would maybe be slightly more expensive but it's still an entry level pen it looks good, it feels good, bolt quality is really excellent. Not much that I could complain about. So, thank you for watching. Please do subscribe if you like this kind of content. I appreciate the loyalty. And uh, let me know what you think about this pen. And I will see you next time.